Life was one of the best StarCraft II players to ever touch a mouse and keyboard. Oh my god, this Zergling control is so good from Life. He's narrowly avoiding the Banelings. He avoids them yet again. Will any of them connect? No, the Queen falls. And Life, oh my god, is playing this out spot on. He was dominant. He gets us around the links. Wow. They're, they're holding what it up. What control. Holy crap. Life, what on earth are you? Not human, that's for damn sure. He was adored. <laughs> and he was on top of the world. That is, until he was convicted of match fixing and sentenced to 18 months in prison, all at just 19 years old. Life made a name for himself in early 2012. It's actually just gonna play the shortest game ever, GG! Life catches him completely off guard here. Jinro is surprised, and this attack was really well thought out. I'm quite surprised how Life managed to pull this off. And the build order here for Hapro was a little bit strange. GG, Hapro getting a later Spire, really committing to it. His opponent, though, had all the preparations in. Life is too strong today. He is certainly on a roll. GG. He takes down five opponents. Life with an all kill. But Life's early wins were just him warming up. At GSL Season 4, he showed the StarCraft community what he was truly capable of, upsetting big names like Marine King and Teja. When that happens, sometimes you have to like, uh, feed, let them feed you. You know what I mean? You have, you have to play defense against life. This is not working. GG. Wow. Oh god, indeed he has Tasteless. Teja, this is going to be his death throes here. This is the last of his Gigi. army fungal. GG. Good luck in the final. Life boasted an 18-5 record heading into the finals, giving him a shot at the Royal Road at his first GSL. The Royal Road is when a rookie player wins a major tournament for the first time they're eligible to compete. It's an incredibly difficult task that few have ever achieved. But Life's opponent in the Grand Finals was his toughest challenge yet. In a best of seven series, the duo went back and forth. The new generation versus the veteran talent, trading map for map. Life's aggressive play won him two maps early, but MVP wasn't phased and took the next three. Yeah, they absolutely can, uh, especially when she punches him up like this. GG realizes that, in fact, he's taken so much damage, and MVP has enough. And MVP saying, uh uh, uh uh. Facing elimination, Life won two maps back to back to bring down MVP and become the first and youngest player to walk the GSL Royal Road. And our champion, Life is First Royal Roader is receiving the check. 50,000 USD. Super ballin'! Prior to life, conventional Zerg play relied on big late game armies with units like Broodlords and Infestors. Life went in the opposite direction, building cheap armies quickly and using a fast and aggressive style of play to catch his enemies off guard. He revolutionized the game. Life was the guy who was going to show you the new way to play Zerg. You know, this more advanced way where you're very active, your, your micro is incredibly precise, you're everywhere on the map, and you're always trying to make things happen. You're not a passive player anymore. You're an aggressive player. You're forcing the action. He really had a killer instinct as a player that he would finish games as soon as he would uh, see the opportunity to be able to do it rather than taking the risk of prolonging the game and maybe allowing your player to come back, the, your opponent to come back. And his control was just uh, beyond anybody else's. So what he did with Zerglings in particular was unheard of and Actually, we haven't really seen anybody do quite the same he has when it comes to that again. After GSL Season 4, Life was on a roll, winning his first tournaments outside of South Korea. Those victories earned Life roughly $82,000. And the wins kept coming. Oh, Naniwa continue to hold on. There's an overseer behind the Hydralis about to be morphed in. The Mothership Core is gone. The DTs are the last real units that Naniwa has. GG! Star Tail Life is...
is the Inter Extreme Masters New York City at Comic Con champion. Impact barely hanging on the entrance. The links spill in, and there's not much left that Impact can do. And GG. Life is our dream hack Bucharest champion. Can MMA make the hold? This is an incredibly tense one uh, right now. Three bailings about to move. Those three bailings could be huge. They go up on one SCV, so that's not so good yet. But look at this. Nothing All here. MMA's SCV is going down. He's a Between October 2012 and November 2014, Life won $328,000 in prize money alone. Money, status, and thousands of adoring fans. Life was on top of the fucking world. Until he wasn't. In October 2015, the Special Investigations Unit of the Chanwon Regional Prosecution Service released a report detailing match fixing in StarCraft II. The report highlighted the arrests of mid-tier players Yoda, Byung Byung, and their coach Gerard, alongside four middlemen and two financial backers. They went into it and they discovered a, like really like a terrible match fixing ring. A, a bunch of players were caught on Prime, which had been like a fan favorite team. And it was particularly bad because they discovered that the coach, due to some being in financial duress, he became, like the coach and team owner, he became the uh, middleman between these people who wanted to pay players to match fix. The community reaction was vitriolic, and Kespa came down on them hard, banning them for life. But then, StarCraft II's biggest star was charged and convicted of match fixing. One of the two pro gamers arrested as part of this investigation is 19-year-old Life, one of StarCraft II's top 50 players with a number of achievements under his belt. The arrest of former Blizzard World Champion Lee Life Seong Hung has been followed with an indictment. On January 29th, 2016, Life was arrested and charged with match fixing during season one of the 2015 Kespa Cup. Life was fined roughly $60,000, the equivalent of what he was paid to throw the games. And he was given an 18 month prison sentence. When it came out, it was Life. I was really angry about it because he had, you know, no reason to do it other than that he could, got himself in a very bad situation in his life with his gambling and all that. But um, if he would have been a little bit smarter, he would have been set pretty well in life as a very, very young, very successful player. He served two months before the sentence was suspended and reduced to probation. And if you're thinking, what the hell, did life set some cruel precedent or something? Well, no, not really. You see, back in 2010, one of the greatest old guard StarCraft players, Savior, was caught up in his own match fixing scandal that rocked the community. He, 10 other players, and one coach were fined thousands of dollars, banned from ever competing in Blizzard or Kespa events, and were handed jail sentences. Yeah, so it was pretty bad just the fact that, like, to, to know that it happened again. I mean, I'm sure people suspected that, you know, that one, you know, round of arrests wouldn't have stamped it out. So when, it, when, when in 2015, the prime scandal happens, like people are like, it's just disheartening to know the man, like after four years later, like not much has changed. Like what, what lessons have really been learned? Fundamentally, there's still the incentive to like, for these guys to take money and take dives. Let's be clear here, match fixing sucks and Life knew what he was doing, but Life didn't actually throw any matches. Reportedly, he threw individual games while still winning the series outright. We're not disputing the ban or the fine because this is a crime and the punishment has to be severe. But prison seems like a little much in this case. Because when the streams turn off and the confetti is fallen, we're still talking about stadiums full of computers and young adults who are prone to making mistakes. And does the reputation of a game mean more than the future of a 19 year old kid? Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.